Hey, how's it going? Welcome to my 278 subscriber special. Cause yeah, why use why use straight numbers? You know that's lame. So before I show you my toolbar, I just wanna quickly explain the channel's shtick to the new people here. So far, we have three video series on this channel. First one is called Rapid Fire Reaper Tutorial. These are really short, quick tutorials that I release daily, and they usually cover a question or a topic in Reaper. They're usually one to three minutes long. I get straight to the point, no fluff. I take all episode ideas from the community. So if you have any questions, just leave them in the comment section of any video. There are no stupid questions. Well, well, some questions are irrelevant to the series we try to do. I answer all questions. I also make another series every Wednesday, and that's called Sound Editing and Design for Visual Media. So I teach kind of like working with sound and sound editing for films, TV, and animation, and ads, and things like that. Four episodes of that are already out. New episodes every Wednesday. That's more of like an episodic, so you need to see them in sequence. I also have another series, but I will talk about that in the end. Too much ramble. Let's jump into Reaper. Okay, so here we are in Reaper and this is my top toolbar. Look at this baby, it's huge. So these are the commands that I use often enough to want to access quickly, but also not often enough to get their own hotkeys. And some of them do exist in the menus above, but I just like to have them over here because I don't like menu diving. You can see my toolbar, I have these separators and these kind of separate different groups of actions. So from left to right, these are project wide settings. These are track wide things. These are item based, these are spectro based, these are kind of organizational commands, color based commands, these are just kind of like others. These are ruler based, and these are grid based commands. So on the left, I have show Reaper resource path in Finder, which if I hit, I'll get over here. And here I can access my icons. If I'm bringing in a new script, I can just quickly access that. If I wanna go to my projects Finder, I can always command and click on the top toolbar and navigate to it that way. I have my project settings, which by default is option and return, but I reassigned option and return. Next is clean current project directory, which is also found right down here. It basically deletes all the unused files in your project. So before I back a project up, I try to clean up its directory. So if I hit it, these are all the media that at one point were brought into the project, but are no longer used in any of the tracks. If I go over here, yeah, you can see that it's 10.2 gigabytes. So let's run this. I can just command A to select all of them. Just pay attention to the fact that when you clean a project directory, it only looks at this project. So within other projects, if you're using these very files they will be deleted i also have a safety for that uh, in my project settings i copy media to project path so if i'm working with anything that i don't want to lose first i copy them to project path and that's a little bit safer select all of them remove all of them yes sir it's 9.6 gigabytes so much better there's other ways of further cleaning this up because of the way reaper works so reaper works non-destructively so if you bring a hour-long video and you trim it to 15 minutes when you clean project directory it's not getting rid of the other 45 minutes next is consolidate tracks and that's also down here i can consolidate that track so i keep all of this and then i can remove the original free up some space next up is search and replace and this is a tool to rename tracks i've already done a tutorial about that link up here this is my video import clericals once again i covered this in my series sound editing for visual media so link up there so those were all the project based ones next up is all the track based ones so this one is for toggling pre-roll on and off this one bypasses all effects except instruments on all tracks. If on my track there's a synth, two EQs and a compressor, this will bypass the EQs and the compressor, keep the software instrument active. Next is delete offline effects from selected tracks. Again, this is for the end of a project. If I'm done with everything, I can just delete offline effects. Next is on solo all tracks. I can also command option click on a solo and that will exclusive solo. Then I just click that and get the same thing. On arm all tracks, this is add receive track from selected tracks. Again, there's a tutorial on this that I've done already in my rapid fire reaper tutorial series. So link of that goes up there. These two are save and restore tracks visibility. So let's say in this project, there's a bunch of stuff I want to hide and then I want to use my mini mixer, right? So what I can do is I can save all tracks visibility like this. Then I can maybe like hide some of these. Whenever I restore all tracks visibility, all the stuff I've hidden comes back. This is a way of getting it back to kind of the starting point. So next is track selection follows item selection. And that means whatever item I pick, the corresponding track will also be selected and it works across multiple tracks too. So if I select all of these, nothing happens. If I select one, it's always active. But if I select all of these, track selection hasn't changed. With this on, it will. So 
boom, boom, boom. You know, I can use that in combination with my mini mixer and I've created a mini mixer. I've already done an episode on how I quickly make mini mixers. My favorite cycle action that I've ever made. I think it's super useful. So check that video out, link up here. Next is the uh, toggle all track grouping enabled. That's by default down here. I just put it up here. Next is show overlapping media items in lanes. So by default, if I drag a bunch of tracks on top of each other, they'll be cross faded hit this and I see them in different lanes. Then I got glue selected items independently. So say I got three items and they all have item effects on them. Normally, if I glue them, the effect will be printed onto the item, but also it will glue one item across the track, right? So all of these are now glued together. Gluing independently means it will print the effects on them, but each one will remain its own file. So that's the difference. This is glue tools. Usually when I'm making kind of game audio things, sometimes I may want to preserve the name, preserve the color of the item. You can choose to include or not include fades. Align selected items across different tracks. This is usually used when I'm trying to layer sound effects. So let's say I got a gunshot happening in this scene. I want to use a high layer, a low layer, and a middle layer. So if I select all these three items and I hit this, their starting point will be aligned to whatever the top one is on. So this is also cool because I can arm this action by right clicking. So if I just right click on it, it'll go red. Now I can just click, select, click, maybe even select, click, and they'll be aligned. So this is really good for getting stuff in order as well. For game audio, where you're only using the timeline as your sandbox, you know, you can just align items so that there's a little bit more organization there. So that's x ray align selected items across tracks. Next is select all items with take effects. So I have tons of items here, but if I just do this, it will then only select everything that has item effects on them. So this guy does, and then these three items do. I can glue them independently, for example or whatever. Next is analyze loudness. This is an SWS feature and that is basically a loudness analyzer. So if I open it, I can go analyze selected items and quite quickly, it'll tell me integrated loudness unit value. It's loudness range, it's true peak. I can also go maximum short term, maximum momentary, which is super nice because obviously there's stuff like Yulian loudness meter. And for serious projects, I still do use that, but you need to let it play through the project to tell you the value. And this is very quick. I will say that I've seen different readings from Yulian loudness meter and this feature for the same item. So I don't know which one to trust. But again, when it comes to true peak, definitely this is correct. So I really like this feature and it comes with SWS. You can also go to extensions, loudness and select the same thing. So the next group of items all have to do with spectral editing and spectral display, which I'll explain to you in a second. First, let's look at the first one. So let's say I have an item and I want to work on its low end and high end separately. So I can type two numbers here. Let's say I want everything below 200 to be one channel and then I want everything over 4000 to be one channel. So I hit it and it gives me these three items and the top one is just the low end. So in this case, because it's speech, I can just turn it way the fuck down. But let's say I brought a project. This is just the mid range. So from 200 to 4,000 sounds very like phone like. So that's a way of using this. And then this is all the high end. So, you know, for example, all my S's are in here. I can just turn them all down that way. I use this usually for sound design. I don't use them for this application that I showed you per se, but again, just to quickly go through them. Next is show normal non-spectral peaks. So by default, Reaper is just showing you the amplitude of audio files, right? These are the quiet parts. These are the loud parts. And if we zoom way in, we can see our digital signal in detail. It goes down, it goes up. So spectral peaks are super cool. It's still showing me my items amplitude, so I can still still see the loudest parts and the quietest parts, but based on my settings, it color codes them based on the kind of most dominant frequency in them. So I also have on my toolbar, my peak display settings, which you can also access here. I can color code my frequencies. So right now I can see anything that's blue is really low end or high end heavy, which I don't have here because it's a speech. Around 600, it's a yellow. Anything that's green is in this region. So this is super useful. And then you can change this, you can change it to octaves if you 
you're working on music you can you can just set full range so we can also look at our track in a track it'll look a lot different i can also then come here and let's set it to every octave basically like these are c's and then these are e's i'm really just like blowing over this whole thing i'll link a tutorial by good old john tidy who goes through uh spectral editing in a lot more detail next up is toggle spectrogram again these take a little bit of time when you first run them in a project but afterwards you can flip between them pretty quickly so this is my spectrogram and again if i hit the peak display settings let's go with preset one yeah this is the classic one so if you don't know what spectrograms are your normal peak shows loudness over time so left to right means times has passed and up and down means loud versus not loud now now some so, some nerd is gonna fucking be like oh that's not exactly what it is but i'm just you know i'm just simplifying this shit okay chill so but the first time we loaded this stuff it took a little bit of time this time it won't take a little bit of time so with spectrograms obviously this shows time this shows the passage of time and then our y-axis shows frequency from low end to high end so for example as you can see this file that i have has a pretty drastic cutoff at some point in the high end probably because it's 44 1 and colors show intensity of that frequency so low end is pretty heavy over here and mid range is really busy too and real harmonics so you can see the harmonic series of a note and this is all noise, which looks like noise, right? I use the spectrograph when I'm editing speech. And once you get used to reading a spectrograph, it's really good for dialogue because obviously when we speak, different consonants and vowels have very different kind of looks to them. Even without hearing this, this is an S. S is always like a cloud of kind of high end. So let's listen to it. These commands that I have. Up. Yep. And yeah, like low end means usually a B or a P. So this stuff is hella useful. And I will definitely do a tutorial on this. And the last thing on my spectral editing toolbar, which is really good as well, is a combination of both. So I see both my channels, normal peaks, and I see the spectrograph. So real useful stuff. And now as you can see, once it created those repeaks for my project, I can switch between them, lightning speed, and whichever one I pull up and go here, I see see its settings again this will be in a full tutorial so next is my organizational commands so as you can see in this project right now i have one marker if i create a bunch of other markers wherever i make a marker it just looks at the first marker number available and makes the marker there it doesn't look at chronologically now i want to keep the markers position and names and all that so let's name a couple of them joey hit this boom now it's one to twelve in timeline order keeps their names keeps their colors just changes their number converting markers to regions so now all the markers are regions next is nudge item this is super useful and by default it's the hotkey n i do something else with n again it definitely deserves its own tutorial so this nudge menu is really good for doing really precise copying and moving of your of your items so right now i can say nudge position so i can change the position left trim left edge or contents of items in really precise amounts so let's say i want to nudge this item's position 25 frames nudge it left it goes by 25 frame amounts i can make it 250 frames instead of frames i can use milliseconds real precise action or i can for example duplicate the item by three measures boom so tons of good stuff you can do here for very precise kind of work like phase alignment or with film work when you need some things to be like sample accurate to a frame or whatever this definitely deserves its own tutorial which i'll do in the near future next is midi learn for last touched fx parameter learn editor i've done a video on this so link goes up there but again just to quickly show you i can touch any parameter then come up here and midi learn it that takes too long for me so i can do this zoop Boop, beep. Now it's assigned. Now I can go to my learn editor and I'll see what MIDI parameter controls what thing. And I can then delete it from here or set ranges to it and stuff like that. Link up there to check it out. Crossfades editor window. I got some media. I can go to its crossfade editor. And as you can see by default, they have 10 milliseconds crossfades on them. Move all of them up and down if I want. I can change their shapes if I want to, do something like that. It's for batch crossfading 
or editing crossfades that are already there. Next is select every nth item. I like this one. So let's say I got a lot of cuts on a track. I want to select every second item. I select the track, select every second item. Then from there, I can, for example, ripple delete them if I want. I can also select every third item or whatever. I use this a lot actually when I'm mixing. Let's say I got a drum loop and the snare on beat two is really intense on beat four, it's not. I can slice up the loop in grids and then select every second item, which is where the snare on beat four falls in and turn those down all together. So this is auto coloring, which again, I've covered in a video. I've actually covered all of this in a video. Random color for selected tracks or items. I can set the color for selected tracks or items, change the items colors, and I can have them be the same as their track, set the random colors, really useful for when you bring in a bunch of sound effects or whatever. You want to keep them on the same track, but you want a way of distinguishing between them. So those are all the color stuff. Next is project regions and markers as grid lines in a range view. So my markers look like this. I see a tail of them, I see where they are, but if I hit this, I'll see them throughout the project. I use it more for regions when I'm BG editing for a film. Next is track item name manipulation. So this search and replace is for tracks and these are for items. So I'll show you what they do. When I'm exporting assets for a library or game audio, I need a way of reliably naming things. So I can select all this stuff and I can go track item name manipulation. I can add a prefix. I can number items, uppercase or lowercase them, like all uppercase, all lowercase, tons of really cool stuff or I can just clear the name now they don't have names now I can build their names like uh, and then number them prefix or suffix and also how wh what number to start from so I want to start from one hit it that's the numbering this one is toggle auto view scroll during playback so normally if I'm playing back my play cursor will go and this will stay on here set this and now my view follows my play cursor so that's pretty neat sometimes when I'm trying to kind of edit on the fly and do some quick work. So those are all the miscellany shit. Next is item rulers. So these are all ruler based actions. Obviously your timeline has a ruler, but your items can have their own rulers. So I can hit this and now I can see the length of this track. Now, big beef that I have with this Reaper system is that it never shows you the actual duration. I wish it shows you the first one, like 0000, no duh. That's always at the beginning i wish that it showed you the total length by always having this number shown but actually it will never show this number the more you scroll in but what for example item rulers could do and and if this is possible definitely let me know in the comments we don't need to see the zero zero it's always zero so it could kind of display this value on the left this value on the left everything on the left and just the last view whatever it is i wish it would show me this is useful like if you're making an instagram story or something cut things that exist exactly 15 seconds. These are for the top ruler. So minutes and seconds, measures or time code. I can quickly switch between those. Easy peasy. And next are my grids. Normally, if you want to change the grid, you right click on this grid settings and then you change it. But that's like a little slow for me. So I have my toggle frame rate grid. Then I got my 16th, eighth, quarter notes, half notes and full notes. And then whichever one I'm in, I hit the triplet. Now I'm in one for triplet. And this is a BPM converter. So let's find us a track. For example, this track has a tempo value of 110, so I can hit it. So you have to actually manually input what it is and then target tempo. This is for very precise stuff. I want to make this 113. So what should it play rate be? Well, it's hard to do the math on that. So this does it very precisely. So holy Christ, this was a really long video. Hopefully you learned a bunch of stuff. Hopefully it gave you some ideas on how to customize your own toolbars. Guys, this is my toolbar. You need your own toolbar. Everybody needs their own toolbar. So you can kind of take inspiration from me a little bit, but create your own. I would make this toolbar available, but again, some of these commands are SWS commands and stuff. So you gotta have them, but I will make this available if you want to just use it as a base and then add your own and delete some stuff and stuff like that. By the way, I didn't like take 10 hours and build this. I worked for a little bit in Reaper and then over time just kind of added stuff and did some organization. So yeah, customize your own toolbars as you go. This is also my automation toolbar. That's for a whole other video, but I've done a bunch of automation videos, which I'll link up here. All right, whoo, 
Ooh, that was really long. Thanks for watching if you made it this far. I got a special gift for my first 278 subscribers. You know what? Let's make it the first 333 subscribers. So my third series is called Mixing Feedback Mondays. I get a mix sent to me and I do like 20 minutes to an hour breaking down the mix and giving detailed feedback on it. Uh, I've done one episode of this so far, so I'll put the link up there. It's a mix by my good friend Mark from Mextech. Uh, normally I charge, you know, $10 for this service, but if you're one of my first 333 subscribers, I want to give you three of these for free. I will literally spend an hour on your mix, give you super detailed feedback, analyze the loudness of it, mixing, mastering, EQing, all that crap will be covered, and give you tons of tips along the way. Mark found it really useful, so he encouraged me to make it a series. Thank you, Mark. And you can redeem these anytime, forever. So whenever you got a mix, just let me know. Um, well, forever until, until the whole planet burns down or possibly the solar system. Uh, I'll put a link in the description with the details on how and where to send me the mix. To redeem, you gotta add this sentence to your email body. Lend me your ears. Put lend me your ears in the body of your email so I know that you binge IDDQD sound and you'll get the discount. All right, are you sharp and get a job? Uh, that, that's enough for today. See ya.